I'm back with Terry Harvey Chudwick, or otherwise known as the Science Viking. Yeah. Uh, if you've watched the main episode, you'll have seen us attempt to eat surstriming and chop up a cabbage for dinner. The cabbage is nicer than the surstriming, but. <laughs> I, I must admit that the onion and the bread did help a lot. Mm. We were warned beforehand by Swedes that you need to eat it in context and not on its own. Because exactly. on its own, it's not meant to be eaten like yeah. that. Yeah, but but, but it was still bad. That that second mouthful, yeah, with the with the with the fish, with the angry fish, that was uh, a bit stupid. <laughs> but entertaining. Day, it was entertaining, <laughs> and that's what it's all about. And, and to be honest, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't something I was spit out. Well, so we're going to roll back into a question that you've answered for me before at your Vic, which was, what's the worst thing that you've ever eaten? It's still cardamom pots. <laughs> they, are the, they are the food of the devil. They are disgusting. If anyone watching has a suggestion for something that he might not like that's <laughs> worse than cardamom... My you, it's got to be worse than Sir Stripping, and I thought that was all right. <laughs> Where do we go from... Uh, it's that thing, the Greenland... Have you seen where they put the seabirds inside the seal? And they rot inside the seal and then they take them out and they eat the seabirds. No. I think you've got to go to Greenland to do that one. Yeah, yeah. But maybe one day. Maybe. That's, th that's starvation rations though, that, isn't it? Mm. So is fermented shark or oh, fermented suppose. herring. I suppose. Shark is better than herring, I'm, I'm saying. I could eat the shark again. It's not yeah. pleasant, but it's fine. Yeah. Surstriming, nah, yeah. I'm good. I'd eat, I'd eat the surstriming again, but, ah. but it has to be with something. It, it, it needs an accompaniment. So the worst food is still cardamom? Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I can't help it. That is I ridiculous. think they're just absolutely foul. Can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's the most memorable meal you've ever had? Most... Surf trimming? <laughs> well, in a way it was memorable because it was so disappointing. I was expecting... I, mean, I was... I, I mean, I wasn't nervous or anything because I don't suffer from nerves, but I was sort of... I wasn't 100% sure that it would be okay. Mm. Do you see what I mean? It wasn't okay. And, <laughs> and I was hoping that it was going to be much worse than it was. So at least I could have some sort of negative reaction. But no. So most memorable meal? Uh, so that on the... Other terms, than that. But other than that, <laughs> the most memorable meal. Oh, to be honest, food is food. I don't really have memorable meals. That says a lot right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just a thing you do. Yeah. I'm sure this, this uh, f food that we're going to have is going to be lovely. I'm sure, I'll, I'm sure that'll be memorable. Mm. Yeah. And the uh, whatever it was we had last night was something to do salt with venison. Salt dough venison. Oh, the salt dough venison. Yeah. yeah, that was nice. Sort of. I sort of remember it. Sausages. Oh, the sausages were okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Made by Hamish's very own hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I was rubbish at it. I, I, I did the first couple of inches and I said, nah. So, yeah, so we haven't really got a great answer for... I know, Just but food is food. <laughs> food is food. And I like... That's the trouble. I like food. Yeah. But it can be memorable for other reasons. You can have memorable because... Yeah. The company or, you know... It doesn't have to be about the food itself. It can be like, oh, well, once I ate a melon on a mountain. <laughs> I mean, no. there was there was a Witchwood feast back in the uh, 90s. That was quite good, because I discovered there at the feast, the food was good, and I discovered my favourite snog, who wasn't my girlfriend, um, and, uh, and, accident, this is going. Well, and accidentally <laughs> snogged a bloke as well, a friend of mine, and, um, but we were doing it all blindfolded. And I, and I knew it was him because we sort of Velcroed together. <laughs> It was all, yeah, we used to play some strange games. Oxford University, you know, they're a decadent lot there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I did get my favourite snog there. All right, so one more question for you. Yes. As you've died and your family and friends are preparing your grave goods, what food and drink do you get to take to the feast in Valhalla? Uh, beer and pork scratchings. That was quick. I think that's the quickest answer I've ever had. <laughs> I have heard tale of you, you know how they, they come on the cards in the supermarket? Oh yeah. I've heard tale of you coming to like the folk night and just hanging them up and just gradually working your way through the whole strip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, although, to be honest, I because it, it's quite strange. I mean, like, you know, there's, there's no Vikings nowadays. Uh, 
No, not real Vikings. <laughs> but but the the Viking sort of way of life, you know, all this stuff about being a drenger. Yeah. Uh, all this stuff about, you know, being true to your word and and generous and all that mm. sort of thing. I I try and live by that. Yeah. And and so uh, yeah. That's what I try to live by. So, as far as the, the huge cards of, yeah, I br- I'll go to Booker's and get the huge card report yeah. scratchings, uh, but I'll, I'll freely share. Yeah. Yeah, I will freely share. So. But that's what you're taking to Valhalla. But that's what I'm taking to Valhalla. Beer and pork yeah. Any particular beer? Uh, or any particular I, pork scratching? Is there a brand? Well, the, the black the ones that I get, the, the, black, uh, the black country pork scratchings, the pub ones, they, they are good. They are good, and they're the because they're nice and easy to get hold of, and yeah. they are good. Then that's probably what I'll take with me. Do you like spicy food? <sighs> Not too spicy. So there's a company called the Wiltshire Chili Company. I've mentioned them before. Again, not a sponsor. Oh, I just yeah, like them. Yeah. They do the best pork scratchings. You can get a salt and pepper one, so you don't have to go spicy. Yeah. But they do these lovely big bat, and they're the best pork scratchings ever. But they do a naga chili. Yeah. And the naga chili is hot. See, I don't like my food adulterated. I like my pork scratching to be pork scratching flavoured. Mm. I've tried mustard flavour. I've tried salt and vinegar flavour. I've tried uh, chili flavour. And it might as well be crisps. Pork scratchings need to t- taste a pig to be proper. I think these, the, the Wiltshire Chili Company ones are good. They're they nice, chunky, ones. they're crispy. Oh, yeah, but if yeah. they do plain ones, then Salt yeah. and pepper. Yeah, they're it's not pepper. plain, plain. Yeah, yeah, well, they're, yeah. They're I don't pro- think they do they're, a... They're naturally salted. They're naturally salted. Yeah. But, well, I'd give it a go. Mm. I'd probably like it, but... What beer would you have? Um, what were we drinking just now? I didn't even check. That was Champion. Champion, OK. Um... I do like a nice hoppy and strong real ale. Mm. Yeah, uh, nice and bitter. Actually, funny story. We've got time for a funny story. If you like. Yeah, my my uh, my wife Catherine. Yeah. Uh, many years ago, when we lived in Milton Keynes, we had a wormwood bush. Yeah. And so she thought she would use make beer. Yeah. But for the bittering, she would use wormwood instead mm. of hops. Yeah, she made the mistake of putting in the same amount of wormwood as you would hops, Ooh. and it was bitter. <laughs> and we had a like a, a five-gallon bucket. Yeah, all mine. <laughs> Nobody else would touch it. I've got some home brews that I've made that have come out a bit bitter. You'd probably like them. Yeah, I do like bitter. Yeah, yeah. I like bitter. Yeah, but and I the mean, wormwood is supposed to be hallucinogenic, isn't it's it? It's what absinthe is made from, I believe. Yeah, but I've heard that it only has an effect if you literally stew something to the strength where it's literally green. Like, it has yeah. to be really... And then yeah. at that point, it's so bitter that most people couldn't drink it. Yeah. So, for most people, it wouldn't have an effect. No. Because no. you'd, you'd only have a, it's, yeah, it's very, a weak solution. Yeah, it's very mild. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I probably... I can't have too, too bitter. But it was bitter enough that I was the only one that could drink it. And we took it to a Witchwood Feast, actually, and uh, they were all mad, but... Actually, there was one other person who did finish a, a hornful, but basically I drank it all myself. <laughs> and on that note, yeah. we shall end the podcast. We'll do. Yeah. So we'll say goodbye to the patrons. <laughs> Bye, uh, patrons. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. And I'll Enjoy. see you next time. <clears throat> goodbye. See ya. If you enjoyed the podcast and want to hear more, remember to like and subscribe and give me a rating. For recipes and ideas, visit my website, saxonforager.co.uk. I also have three cookbooks available to buy on Amazon worldwide. These are Eat Like a Viking Volumes 1 and 2, and Eat Like a Halfling. Thanks for watching!